Hello, and welcome to the Facial Paralysis and Bell's Palsy Foundation presents Beauty Tips to Improve Facial Symmetry with Carson Barenborn. I'm Lisa McKinley, Director of our Foundation, and I'm being assisted today by Barbara Pasternacki. If you have any questions during our webinar, you may ask them by typing in the questions box on the tab on the right hand side of your screen and Carson will answer them as time allows at the end. Now I would like to introduce our presenter today. Carson Berenborg is from Seattle, Washington, and she is a master esthetician and also founder of the health and beauty website, Beauty with Paralysis. We're so excited to have her sharing with us today. Welcome, Carson. Thank you for your introduction, Lisa. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. Um, I kind of started my blog wanting to figure out tips and techniques that would help me not only feel more comfortable in my own skin, more confident, but could also help improve the symmetry of my face. So I want to kind of discuss today the main um, techniques that have really helped me, and hopefully some of you will uh, take away any of the techniques that I share and really enjoy doing them on your own after this. So let's get going. I want to start out by discussing one of the main techniques that I love doing, uh, contouring. So basically what it is, it's a technique that is used to alter the appearance of the face or facial features. It has helped me, especially on my paralysis side, by creating more definition and um, I usually will start out the contouring on my non-paralysis side. And then by mapping out this side, I'm able to assess where I should contour on my paralysis side. And this is a technique that can be achieved by using a liquid cream base or a powder form. So there's really no rules when it comes to contouring. You kind of just have to figure out what works best for you. And so as you can see in, on the image on the right, this technique usually consists of using a light contour, bronzer, and a highlighter. The uh, light contour adds warmth to your face so that you don't just have that severe bronzer look. It kind of adds more dimension and creates more of a natural uh, technique in the cheek area especially, that's where you want to add that warmth. And then the highlighter will help draw attention to an area of the face. So as you can see in the image, right between the eyebrows in this area, I usually like to add the highlighter right down my nose and right in the center of my chin and under the eyes. And it really just helps your eyes pop. And then the bronzer, which is the darker shade, helps create that dimension that we're looking for. And so I'm gonna show you guys a video. This is how I contour. So I basically just wanted to map out and show everyone how I, where I position everything. And like I said, I always start out on the non paralysis side so that I can kind of match it. And then I, in this video, I'm using a cream-based contour technique. This isn't something that I typically like to do on an everyday basis. I usually will use more of a powder just because this is a much more intense look. So it's great for, you know, a night out, but um, for, for me, it's just typically not an everyday look. But as you can see, I'm using a brush, just it's a little bit of a smaller brush because it helps so that the product isn't spreading all over the place. And then you just have to blend it really nicely. And you know, if you look online at contouring, ways that everyone does it so it, it really does take some practice you just have to figure out what works best for you and what you feel the most comfortable with 
So, and then I do my forehead area, as you can see. And it, you know, with the cream base, it typically takes a little bit longer, especially with like blending it and making it look and appear more natural. But like I said, this is really great for facial paralysis. It really helps create that dimension, especially if you have that lack of movement on that side. You can really create those shadows and contour this side so that it appears more even overall. So here I am blending. It, yeah, so I, it, it definitely isn't the type of contour that I enjoy doing all the time just because it is more of a severe look. Not in a bad way, but you know, just for an everyday, I usually like to use a powder. And then also what's great is online, um, if you can figure out your facial shape, there's actually images on Google that will show you like a face that will allow you to be able to map out exactly the areas that you should contour depending on your facial shape. So I'm still blending out that area and it's great to, you can use any type of brush you want. Sometimes I'll use actually a beauty blender um, after I'm done contouring. And now I'm doing the jaw area and I find that this is great because I actually have had a few reconstructive surgeries and I've kind of don't have as much of a jawline on my paralysis side. So this will help create that look and create some of that shadow and dimension on that side. And so I think it's extremely beneficial for us that suffer with facial paralysis so it's all about blending and you know like i said there's no rules when it comes to contouring you kind of just have to practice you can use any type of products i really really like to use um it's called smashbox it's a makeup brand and this is their contour it comes in like a trio so they have the three shades and their cream sticks, but I also have their powder form. And the reason why I like that brand is because they actually have a whole step-by-step -step process with images of, okay, this is what you're gonna do first, second, third. Because sometimes it does get overwhelming if you go onto YouTube and you're watching all these different women sharing um, different step-by-steps. It can just be like extremely overwhelming because you're thinking, oh, am I doing this the right way? Was I supposed to do that step previously or after? And so it's nice to use a product that has all of the um, step by steps for that specific product that you're applying. And so as you can see in the video now, I am contouring my nose area. And I actually use a different brush since it, this is um, a smaller area of the face. You wanna be able to blend it effectively. And so I actually use a mini beauty blender. Like I said, you can use any type of brush, but it's nice to have, if you're gonna use a brush, a much smaller, thin, delicate brush in comparison to when you're contouring the overall face since this is a smaller area. And then once I'm done blending this area, I'll go over every area with a larger beauty blender, make sure everything is blended. My forehead, it's not as blended in the video. So it's important to, you know, go over everything and I'll highlight certain areas. And so that was just a brief, uh, contouring video with cream based technique. And now, I want to talk about magnetic lashes. I've discussed this on my blog, and 
I think that it's genius. It's so amazing that there's no glue involved. And for us women that struggle with that lack of eye closure, it's, it's really hard to apply those strip lashes that involve glue or go and get lash extensions. Some people don't have that option. And so this is definitely something that I think that if you do struggle with that, this, this could be a really great option for you. And what I do like is that they don't destroy your own natural lashes. Um, the only thing I have to be honest about is that this is definitely very tricky. Like this will take a, more practice and, you know, I think more practice than contouring because it's, it's a little bit more difficult because you're putting the top lash and then you're pretty much sandwiching your natural lash by putting the magnet on the top and on the lower and it kind of comes together and it can be difficult because once you're placing the magnetic lash the the upper layer it can move around what when you're trying to grab the under layer of the other magnetic lash but i think that it's a really great technique that especially if you don't have the ability to go and you know, wear strip lashes out. This is something that's awesome. And I think overall lashes can really help with women that are suffering with synchinesis. It really helps create that symmetry in your eye area. Okay, so in this video, I wanted to talk about eyebrows and how to create more symmetry within that area. I always start out with a gel. It's it kind of I use the Anastasia. It's a eyebrow gel, so it's clear, but what I like is that it when you brush your eyebrows, it kind of will hold them in place when you're filling them in and creating that symmetry. The only problem that I have found is that with facial paralysis, when it comes to makeup, you can create more symmetry at rest. But, you know, when I smile, my this eyebrow kind of goes up still, even if I do create more symmetry at rest. But, um, so I start out with a eyebrow gel. It's clear, it'll keep everything more at rest and hold everything together. I always start out kind of like with contouring. I always start out with um, my non paralysis eyebrow and I shape it and fill it in. It's really simple. And then I will match my paralysis side eyebrow to the other eyebrow after um, I finish the first side. And it's great, like you can use any type of eyebrow pencil that you have. Um, and you can touch it up, brush through it again. I like the Anastasia because on the other side of it, you can brush through it, blend the pencil in. I also have enjoyed doing um, eyebrow tinting. I think it's a great way to create that color and it actually lasts for like six weeks and you can buy it on Amazon and it really helps us like bring more color and dimension to that eye area. So eyebrow tinting is great, but filling in your eyebrows and kind of, I always like to do the non-paralysis non side first and then go from there and then try to look at every, see how I'm kind of mapping it and seeing, okay, that arches at that region of the eye. So that's been really helpful. Just learn. Also, I think it's important to realize that eyebrows are supposed to be sisters, not twins. 
they're not going to be perfect, you know, and they're not going to be the exact same. So that's that. So I have some other beauty tricks that I would like to discuss that have really helped me. Those were the main topics. And then here are a few other ones that I really, really, really love. I just talked about this on my website, but it's um, jade rollers. They are amazing. I tend to like to use them in the morning after I get out of the shower or I, you know, just applied my toner and I'm using my serum, you actually can place your serum in certain regions of, of your face and roll your jade roller up. You will always want to do it upwards. So I have mine and I actually, what I like to do is put, place a sheet mask on and then I jade roll. And that's awesome because any type of product that we're using on our skin is it's really just laying on the surface of the epidermis. And so jade rolling can help penetrate that skincare product even deeper. And so I really, really enjoy doing it with a sheet mask. It's cooling, it wakes me up, and you're getting more of the benefits of the skincare products. And it's increasing your blood circulation, getting that all that circulation going in the face. It also has helped kind of tone and relax this side of my face. And it's been, I love it. And it has a lot of really great anti-aging benefits to it. So I really recommend getting a jade roller. I want to discuss cream eyeshadow. I now, I think in the last year I kind of switched over to cream eyeshadow instead of using a powder based eyeshadow. Um, you know, my eyes, this one is very sensitive and I just feel like with powder, it just is so uncomfortable and you know, that it moves around and it can get into my eye and it's just, it can become very uncomfortable. But with cream eyeshadow, what is awesome about it is um, it doesn't move when you apply it. You just blend it nicely on the lid and it's not going to move around. You don't have to worry about it getting into your eyes. And so I've been, that's pretty much what I've been using only for my eyeshadow is cream. I hardly ever use powder anymore. I know that everyone has their, you know, preference, but I really enjoy using cream eyeshadow. I think that it's extremely beneficial for us women with facial paralysis because you you don't have to worry about any irritations of the eye and it you know makeup is scary at first dealing with facial paralysis and so the more that we are able to feel comfortable and think of ways to apply it, especially eye makeup I think is great, so. Setting spray. I, I actually use the Urban Decay All Nighter, I have it. And I use it at the very beginning. I know they, people always say, oh, use your setting spray at the end. Kind of finalize that makeup look and to hold everything in. But what I like to do is when I'm applying my foundation, I'll spray, instead of using water in my beauty blender, I'll spray um, this setting spray onto my beauty blender and I kind of build with the setting spray throughout my makeup routine. And I really like doing that because you don't have to worry about anything moving around. And I have found that, you know, on this side, if I'm having uncontrollable movement or, you know, my makeup isn't sitting and holding in place as much as it does on this side. Something that helps is a setting spray. It really helps kind of seal it in. Eye brighteners. These are extremely beneficial. 
uh, if you kind of want to create an illusion of eye synchronesis. So if you have an eye that's a little bit more, you know, shut than the other one, I think that eye brighteners could be a really great option for you. Um, you can use them in so many different ways. Uh, if you have an eyebrow that's lower than the other one, you can apply it below, like right below the eyebrow. Or you can apply it. There's just so many, there's no rules when it comes to makeup. It, it, I just love to think of different ways to come up with, um, especially with eye brighteners. I feel like they, there's just so many options and where you can apply it. If I am feeling extra tired and my Botox is worn off and this eye is especially more closed than my right one, I will apply the Eye Bright Benefit that's in the photo to both eyes, but I'll add extra to my left side. And it really does create an illusion. I swear, I, I, it, it's pretty crazy what makeup can do these days. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Hey, Carson. Great. Um, yeah, I, we do have a few questions coming in. So can okay. you hear me okay? Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Um, first one, um, when contouring, do you start with foundation first or do you put the foundation over the contouring? Yeah. Um, so I should have mentioned that when I shared the video, but um, I always apply my foundation and I actually will do my concealer. And then once I've applied those two steps, then I'll go into the contouring. It's all about like starting with a fresh canvas, applying that foundation and then, and then contouring. Okay, great, great. Um, next question, um, some more eye questions. What about mascara? Do you have like a, what type of best is best, like waterproof, easy wash off? Any thoughts about that? With mascara, I, I don't really enjoy, I know everyone has a preference, but I don't like using waterproof because I find that it's even harder to get it off. Um, I think that there's just so many options when it comes to mascara. I really like the Glossier mascara because it's not, it doesn't, when you apply it to your eyelashes, if you can look for something that isn't, it doesn't have that buildup and it doesn't look chunky on the brush application. Because I think it's important to find something that will really help separate those lashes and won't kind of create those chunks. Um, another key thing that I have found that really helps when I'm applying mascara is using an eyelash curler. And that really helps lift the eyelashes out of the eye area. And, you know, I think that it's important, especially if you are dealing with that lack of eye closure to be able to make sure that when you apply mascara that your eyelashes are lifted and up. Okay, well, that's great. That's a great answer. Um, along with the eyes, what about eyeliner? Do you have suggest like pencil or liquid works best and any suggestions on that? So for eyeliner, I have found that it's very important that when you apply it, you do it, you don't do it like right into that tear duct region. You have to do it below the eyelid area. Um, but with, I think liquid can be a great option. But I also, what I really like doing, because I know that it can be hard with your paralysis side. Sometimes the eyeliner can move around. Um, what I like to do is, I always like to apply eyeliner on the lower part of my eyes. I will actually 
take a, um, a makeup pencil brush that, you know, for eye makeup and I'll spray it with my setting spray and I'll dip it into my cream based eyeshadow and I'll then apply it. Cause then you, it, that enables, um, that will allow you to make sure that it's not going to move around. Okay, great, great. Um, along on still on the eyes, do you have a brand of cream eyeshadow that you recommend or have suggestions there? Yeah, I, I actually, again, I love the Glossier ones. Um, I use these two almost every day, but um, they they have a bunch at Sephora. I just, to be honest, this is what the only brand I've been using. Um, however, I know that uh, Giorgio Armani, I've used that one. They have really great cream based. Uh, I like this because you can literally take this and just apply it to the lid, you know? Or sometimes I'll apply it to my hand and then I will blend it and dab it in with my finger. So I like this more than the ones that you can get in like the little circular makeup tubes. This is better because, at least for me, because then I can just apply it directly. Okay, great. Um, next about, they're asking about lipstick. Um, do you wear like lipstick or gloss? And then do you recommend like a dark or neutral for, especially with paralysis concerns? Any tips there? Um, so the one that I'm wearing right now is more of a matte based. And I like that because it is, um, it's on, especially with, you know, your lips and the lack of symmetry, things can start moving around if you're using a lip gloss. But then again, you know, it's a preference and I think you have to figure out what is best for you. Okay, great. Um, I've got one last question. Uh, what about blush? Do you always wear blush or any things there? I love blush, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Even with contouring, when I contour, you're only bringing it out to this area. And so I'll always put on a little bit of blush right here, maybe even a little bit on my nose at the end. I think it just creates more warmth in your face. Okay, great. Those have been, yeah, I think these have been great tips, Carson. We really enjoyed Thanks. having you today. Um, this Thanks will for having me. Yeah, great. This will conclude our webinar today. Um, a recording of this presentation will be available on our website, facialparalysisfoundation.org, within a few days. Um, thanks again to Carson and Barbara and also everyone who attended today. And you can check back our uh, Facebook and website anytime for future offerings. So thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks, Lisa.